Today, I am going to talk about the biggest thing that will make a difference in your own artwork. Values. It is always about the values. People come to me all the time asking, how do I make my work look more realistic? Or the bigger thing is I need to know what color you're using. Like if someone's following along with the tutorial, I need to know the exact color you're using. No, and I'm gonna show you why. We're gonna show, we're going to be focusing on values. If you are having a hard time with color and you are not getting your color, you feel like that's why your work doesn't look realistic, it's your values. It is almost always the values that are to blame. Your darks aren't dark enough, your lights aren't light enough, and we are going to talk about that in today's project. Before we get started, if you are members over at Patreon, make sure to head over where you've got the real-time version of this demonstration available for you now. If you are not familiar with Patreon, for as little as $4 a month, you get access to over 300 of my past tutorials available immediately when you sign up, and a new one every single week. If you want to check out what type of content I have available, head over to my Patreon video library on my website. The link is in the video description. You can see what I've got there along with a free two-hour long colored pencil demonstration. The supplies that I'm using for this project are listed in the video description. It is the Canson Me Tans. This is the rough side so that the charcoal has a lot to grip to. And then just white and black charcoal, keeping everything very, very simple. Now, if you look at my sketch here, the details are in there, but look, it's flat. It, there is no dimension here because the values aren't in there. We have a tendency to get caught up on the reason that I can't make my work look realistic is I don't know what colors to use. If someone would just tell me the right color for whether it be skin tone or fur, fur colors on a specific breed of dog, whatever it is, that's not what's going to make a difference. It is going to be your values. How light are your lights? How dark are your darks? And more often than not, we tend to want to play it safe and keep everything mid-range. It's kind of scary to make things really dark and really light, but that's the very thing that is going to make your work look striking. I don't care if you have the most perfect tone of reddish brown for a tiger or whatever color the tiger needs to be, it's not gonna matter if the values aren't there. You're, you basically just made a great cartoon. If you want things to look realistic, you have got to pay attention to those values. I've told this story a few times. There was an artist I used to know on a forum I, I was on all the time, and she did really detailed, detailed work of these dogs for pet portraits, but her work was very bland. Not because she wasn't skilled, not because she wasn't putting in the time, not because her work didn't have enough detail because her values were terrible. She had no definite darks or definite light. She played it safe. Everything was mid-range. As amazing as her work was as far as detail and accuracy goes, it was pretty boring to look at. You could put somebody's work next to hers that maybe wasn't quite as accurate or detailed, but that would have been the piece that people would be drawn to, that more customers would be drawn to, not hers, even though she put more time into it. She was skipping over the values. You've really got to focus on those values in your work. And I know it can be scary to make those darks really dark and those light areas really light. One of the things that you can do when you get your work to where you think it's just about done, no matter what medium you're working in, take a photo on your cell phone, put it into whatever photo editing you app, app that you have and adjust the contrast. Look how much better it will almost always look if you hype up that contrast. And then that may be the thing that makes you brave enough to go apply those changes to your own artwork. Don't just post the photo of the, the edited photo online and pretend that's what yours looked like. That's kind of deceiving, especially for potential customers. Go make your work look like that. Now, if you primarily work in, let's say, colored pencils or acrylic paintings, something where you're using a lot of colors, charcoal may be a great way for you to practice your values because you're limiting yourself to just black and white. Your whole piece is based off building depth, making it look three-dimensional just on lights and darks. You're not even getting color involved here. So once you do switch over or back to one of your mediums where you're using a lot of color, it is going to be easier for you to, to understand what needs to happen. You're not going to be as prone to wasting a ton of time going, but is this the exact right purple? Should I use this purple or that purple? You'll have realized that purple's not a really big deal. Is it dark enough or is it light enough? That is what's going to make a much bigger impact on that finished painting. Now look how great the light areas stand out because I've got the dark areas really dark in there. If my dark areas were not dark enough, my light areas right next to it or on top of it, they're not going to look as light. So if you're working on something and you're like, I just can't get this dark area dark enough or the light area light enough, 
make this the section next to it lighter or darker. So if it's not dark enough, I'm gonna make the light next to it a bit brighter and that's gonna make my darks appear darker. And then the, the same in reverse. If my light areas aren't light enough, make what's next to it dark enough. I mean, you've got something white, you know you can't make it look brighter. It, it's as bright as you can go. Make what's next to it darker and that's going to make the light area stand out that much more. Something that you do want to be aware of is don't just put random highlights and shadows anywhere. You may be like, okay, I've got this. We want to, we want to hype up the contrast. Yes, but in the right place. When you're working on animals especially, don't think, I know I need more highlights or I need more shadows, so I'll just throw some in all over the place. They need to be in the right place. Those shadows and highlights indicate the underlying bone and muscular structure of the subject. So do be aware of where they are. But what I will typically do is take my reference photo. You should pick a photo where you can see where the general lights and darks are and then just make them a little lighter or a little darker. Now remember, even though I am saying values are what is most important, still pay attention to those details. Make sure, like in this case, I need to make sure that the fur is moving in the right direction. I don't kind of like the talking about where the shadows and highlights should go. That indicates that underlying bone and muscular structure. So does the direction of the fur. So I want to make sure that I am looking at my reference photo and really make matching that up. I don't need the fur in order to make it look realistic. It's not a matter of every single strand of fur has to be exactly like the reference photo, no. But I do wanna make sure that that fur is moving in the correct direction. It's about the same length, about the same width, that I've got the clumps going together the way they should and in the right direction. We have a tendency to want to just add more detail, thinking that that's the thing that'll make it look more realistic. Yes, it can help, but that's usually not the key. Your values are what is important, but when you add detail, make sure it, it's moving the right direction. You're not just putting random confetti fur all over the place. I see that all the time when people are getting started with animals or people, they just kind of put lines all over. More lines means more hair. It kind of ends up looking like a zombie that way. So pay attention to that photo. Now, this stage is a great example. Look how flat and muted it is. I have all of this detail. I've got lights, I've got darks, sort of, but they're still too muted. They are not strong enough. So once I get to this sort of mid-range section, I'm gonna have to come through and really start focusing on not just getting better detail, but I've gotta focus on hyping up the contrast of the lights and darks. Start really, in this case, my lights are pretty good. My darks are not dark enough. And that I would say is the thing I see most often when people are getting started. They don't get the darks dark enough. The lights don't seem to be as scary for most, but getting those dark areas dark, that is what we wanna focus on. Now that those mid ranges are in and most of the detail is sort of blocked in, I'm gonna come through and start really cleaning things up and really focusing on getting those darks even darker. And like I was saying earlier, if there's an area where my dark just doesn't look dark enough, make what's next to it brighter and that or lighter, and that's going to make the dark appear that much darker. Now be careful when you're drawing animals, especially dogs where the fur is a bit shorter on the muzzle. Don't overdo the detail there. You can see I'm coming through and softening some of that out. It makes it look a little too wiry. It completely changes the fur texture. So this is one of the great, one of many great things about charcoal. Very easy to soften that fur up just by taking my blending stump and lightly going over those areas. I did, had to do that quite a bit around the muzzle. I want the hint of fur there. I just don't want it to be quite as sharp as it was. spending a lot of time at this point looking at my reference photo. What direction does that fur move in? Don't just make a bunch of lines. And another thing that I often see newer students do is they look at the reference photo once and they make a couple of lines and that's where they should stop and look at the reference photo again. But instead, they just keep going. They just keep making more and more lines without looking again at the reference photo. So those first two or three brush strokes or pencil strokes look great. They were correct. But then their brain kind of tried to override it and say, we've got this. I remember what it looks like when it really doesn't. Constantly stop and look at that reference photo and double check where the fur switches directions. If it's a little bit off, it's not a huge deal, but you do want it pretty close. You can see I'm taking that blending stump and really softening some of that fur out. And look how much darker the ear looks having the light area right behind it like that. My ear still needs a lot of work, but you get the idea. You can see though where it's starting to come together. So 
fur really starts changing directions as we move out this way and towards the body. Now I want to get a few strands sticking out over the background. Just don't overdo that. You, you don't want too many individual strands or it starts looking like a wire, kind of wire coat for like maybe an Irish wolfhound, which is not what I want here. So instead, we want to start forming these clumps and clusters of fur. And you can really see a lot of those clumps on the fur under the ear. Even in this small section, those are still in little clumps. Now that's still pretty muted, still gonna have to come back through with the dark areas in between these and make that stand out a lot more. And every time I blend over this, so little thing to be aware of when you use the charcoal, every time I blend over that, look how it just, I lost my darks. Every time I went and softened that out. So I've gotta really do have to come back through with that dark charcoal and pull that back out. Now my last tip for you today about focusing on values is that where you put your higher contrast, that is going to pull the viewer's attention to that area. So this is a trick you can use to control where the viewer is looking. If you look at him, his around his nose and his eyes, this is where I really want the focus. So I'm going to not only add more detail in those areas or sharper detail, I'm going to have higher contrast. So my darkest darks, my brightest brights, I'm going to, to really focus that around the face and soften things out as I move away from the wolf. I don't want to just do a floating head. This is something I see a lot and it rarely looks good. When you are doing pet portraits, this doesn't have to do with the... the values tip I was talking about. But when you're drawing subjects or pet portraits, try to avoid the floating head. You can still keep the focus on the face and just soften out the value, soften out the details as you move away from the head. But just a head where you kind of chop it off, you can't see the body at all, that very, very rarely looks good. Can it look good? Yes, I have seen that done where it worked, but it is rare. So you can try something like this where I've just softened out both detail and value. So it's more muted as I move away from the face where I want the focus to be. Help, my body's missing. Mine's gone too, this is terrifying. Well, I was gonna blame you for doing it since you're a wolf, but apparently you're having the same issue. Who did this to us? I've been watching a lot of TikTok videos. A lot of those are of wolves. I've become slightly, obs I, 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 whole room obsessed, I'm obsessed. So I have to draw them. How do you subscribe yet? If not, I have a handy button right there. It's round, has an orange arrow going towards it. If you click on that, YouTube probably still won't notify you when new videos go up. So also make sure you're clicking on that bell notification icon. Share this video if you can with anyone who you think it may help and sign up for my email newsletter. Link is in the video description.